Good to see you. Welcome to Chad's Ford Baptist VBS Family Day. We are so excited that you're here and we're excited about all the fun things that we have in store for you today and we want to thank you for being here. We've been excited about this day and just glad that you all could make it. Why don't we open with a word of prayer and then we're going to do some fun songs together, some of our favorite VBS songs, okay? So let's pray together and then we'll jump right into it. Father, thank you so much for this beautiful day you've given us. Thank you for each and every one who could come out. I pray you'd give us a special time together as we sing songs about your son, Jesus Christ, as we try to honor you and and Father, I pray as we try to learn more about Christ, you would work in each of our hearts. I pray we could have a great time and a safe time, but also a time of drawing close to you and learning about your Son and learning about your Word. So I pray you'd bless each one today in Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, we're going to get started with one of our favorite VBS songs, and it's called, I've Got Peace Like a River. How many of you remember this little song? And I'll show you the motions quickly. It's easy. If you don't know it, you'll catch right on. But it's, I've got peace like a river, okay, in my soul. I've got joy. That's the way we have to do it, loud, okay. Joy like a fountain. Or you can do your fountain this way if you prefer, and then I've got love like an ocean in my soul, okay? So let's stand. You have to stand for this one. Don't, don't poke anybody when you do your fountain, okay? Here we go. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace. so confused. I, I, I didn't know whether we're on peace, joy, or love. I'm rusty. You see, we missed VBS last year, and so I'm rusty on all these songs now. But you guys did great. That was fantastic. All right, another song we love at VBS is called Hallelujah. 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 Praise ye the Lord. And i tell you what let's do. Let's just sing it through one time so that you learn it, and then we'll do something fun with it, okay? But let's just sing it through, let you learn the tune, and then we'll do something fun with it. Hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. 
y'all hear any any singing behind me? Oh, <laughs> so it looks like we have some extra visitors this morning, don't we? All right, you know they're pretty good singers. I can hear them back there. They're doing pretty good back there. All right, let's do something fun with this song. Let's break it into, uh, I'll tell you, let's see. Let's break it into three parts. How about we do that? We'll have the, uh, let's have the boys do the hallelujahs, okay? We'll have the puppets do the yas, okay? You think the puppets can do the yas? We'll, have, we'll see if they can do the yas. And then we'll have the girls do the praise ye the lords, okay? But here's the catch. You have to stand up when it's your part, okay? So you have to be fast. So boys, we'll start it off. We'll stand up and we'll sing out those hallelujahs. The puppets, hopefully, unless they're asleep, they'll do the yas. And then girls, will st uh, you'll stand up and you'll do the praise ye the lords, okay? And that, on that last praise ye the Lord, Everybody stand up and belt it right out. All right, ready, boys? Here we go. Get ready to stand. Here we go. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yeah. Praise ye the Lord, boys. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yeah. Praise ye the Lord, girls. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise Switch it around. Alright? Wow. We'll have the girls do the hallelujahs. And the puppets, we'll let them. Did they do all right with the yuzz? They did all right. We'll let them keep the yuzz. And then we'll have the boys do the praise ye the Lords, okay? All right. Liam's ready. Here we go. Ready, boys? I mean, no, wait a minute. Girls. <laughs> girls. Here we go, girls. Here we go. seen any strange what was that See all of our families and all of the 
Amen. the young people and everybody. This is BBS Family Day. At Chad, you're at Chad's Ford Baptist Church. Chad's Ford Baptist yeah. Church. Family Day. Yep. Well, I'm sorry. I, I thought this was farm day. I loaded Bessie up. I brought big brown eyes, sweetest thing you ever saw. <laughs> well, well, you know no. what? That's okay because sometimes we all take the wrong turn, but you know what? I think the Lord led you here because, you know what, we're just one big happy family at Chad's Ford Baptist Church, and we'd love for you to be a part of our family. All right, you're going you're gonna to let me stay? Yes, sir, it would be our pleasure to have you. Shindig? We would absolutely you love to have you. Would we would love to have Farmer Brown, wouldn't we? Some saw giants big and strong, all right? Some saw grapes and clusters long. Some saw God was in it all. Ten were bad and two were good, okay? You think you can do that? You think you can keep up with me? All right, we'll, we'll do it real slow. Stand up with me. We'll start off slow. Twelve men went to spy out gain and ten were bad and two were good. What do you think they saw in Cain and Tim were bad and two were good? Some saw giants big and strong. <laughs> Some saw grapes and clusters Faster? Yeah. All right. What? 
at it. Now don't bite your tongue, okay? All right. You ready? From the wooden spot, in the back, you can get the way they saw me. of Vacation Bible School are our puppets. Boy, I want to tell you, we, uh-oh, I think we're in trouble. We have, this, we have this same problem every year. We get ready for the puppets to come out and they're all sleeping. And you know what we have to do? We have to wake them up, right? So what, what we're going to do is I'm going to count to three. I'll go one, two, three, and then we'll yell, puppets, okay? All right, you think we can do that? You think we can wake them up? All right, here we go, ready? One, two, three. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to one of the most exciting days of the year here at Chad's Ford Baptist Church. Yes, welcome, boys and girls. I can't believe it's finally here. I've been counting down the days for months now, and I can't believe today is finally here. Aren't you so excited? Not gonna lie, I usually don't get very excited about anything, but I'm actually really, I mean, well, kind of looking forward to today. However, I can't say I'm excited about getting up this early. A girl like me does need her beauty sleep, of course. Don't worry, Stella. There's no point in trying because I'm already the best looking puppet around. I don't even have to worry about my beauty sleep. And yeah, I'm pretty excited about today, too. Wait a minute! What exactly is going on today? Did I miss something? <gasps> Wait for a minute, Webzy! Do you mean to tell me that you don't know what today is? Oh no! I missed something, didn't I? Oh, what did I miss? What day is it? Why, it's only the best day ever. And it only comes once a year. Yeah, like it's the one day out of the year where everyone has fun. So it only comes once a year, everyone has fun, everyone gets up early, and it's the best day ever? Wait! It is family day. Oh, I love Christmas. It's just the best season ever. Oh, and oh, there she goes. And the and the no, Webzy. Well, it's not Christmas. Well, Calm down there. Not Christmas? Well, then what day could it possibly be? It's, it's ABS, ABS family, family day. day. Well, it's pretty spectacular. It's basically a whole day of fun things for people of all ages, like games, prizes, stories, songs, balloons, animals, and skits. That's right, Ruff. It's going to be a jam-packed day, which is why I came prepared. I have everything a puppet might need for a full day of activity. I've got sunscreen, water bottles, tissues, band-aids, chapstick, bubble wrap, a jacket, an umbrella, a hairbrush, jumper cables, a compass, and of course, Mexican jumping beans. Mexican jumping beans? You better believe it. What could you possibly need Mexican jumping beans for? You never know when they might come in handy. But don't worry, I'm prepared for every situation that may arise today. Okay then, Lou, we're so glad you're prepared. So let me get this straight. Today's gonna be a whole day of games, prizes, stories, skits, balloon animals, and songs. And Mexican jumping beans. Can't forget those. That's right. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention the snacks. Shh. Quiet, Roth. Don't say that word. He'll hear you. Wait, what word? You mean snacks? Is that the word? Shh. 
Yes, genius, now stop saying it or else Gunther will hear you. And you know how he gets when he hears snacks. Now you've done it! Did somebody say snacks? You've got to be kidding me. Hello, everyone. My name's Gun. <coughs> I mean, Special Agent Snack. And I believe I heard someone say the word snacks. Yes, hello, Gunther. Excuse me, I mean, Agent Snack. Correction. That's Special Agent Snack. Thank you very much. And I'm here today on a top secret mission that only a professional spy like myself uh, could accomplish. And what exactly is this top secret mission you're on? Well, if I told you, I guess it wouldn't be very top secret. Now would it? Oh, please, Gunther, just tell us what the mission is. Well, my mission is to show up to VBS Family Day, sneak my way into the snack tent, and then eat all the snacks. You can't eat all the snacks! What about everybody else? Good point, Webzy. I may not be able to accomplish my mission alone. I may, to re may need to recruit some help on the second thought, though. I probably could eat all the delicious snacks single-handedly, <laughs> if I tried hard enough. Well, just in case you can't do it alone, I volunteer to help you on your valiant snack-eating mission. Please don't encourage him, Ruff. Well, Gunther, I mean Special Agent Snack. It sounds like you have quite the mission to complete today, but just make sure you leave some snacks behind for all the rest of us to enjoy. Ew. Ew. I'll try, but I can't make any promises, since it's technically a top secret mission. But if that makes you feel any better, I have to find all the snacks before I can get them anyway. And they always do do a good job of hiding them from me. Okay, Gunther, it sounds like you've got a pretty big mission to complete, so you better get started. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think you're right. I better get going if I'm going to complete my mission, but I'm sure I'll be seeing you guys around. Oh, and don't forget to let me know if you happen to find the snacks before I do. Yeah, okay, we'll do that then. Special Agent Snack Out! Wait for me! Well, it sounds like DBS Family Day is gonna be a lot of fun! I can't wait to play games, win prizes, eat snacks, and get balloon animals! Well, do you think they could make me a spider balloon? Well, I mean, I guess it's possible. It would take a lot of balloons, though. Yeah, I guess it would take a lot of balloons. But there's only one way to find out. I'll see you guys at the balloon animal tent. I'm so excited! Well, it looks like everyone's about to beat us to the fun. We should probably get go. Plus, I have a few more things I need to put in my prepared puppet bag just in case. What more could you possibly need to bring with you? <laughs> I'm sure she'll think of something. Come on, guys, let's head out. Hopefully Gunther hasn't found the snacks yet. Bye! Bye. We have to get out there and beat Gunther to those snacks, don't we? But I did, I did happen to see we got a lot of good snacks, all right? And a lot of yummy treats and a lot of fun things to do outside. And we are excited about that. One of the things we enjoy doing each year at Vacation Bible School is we have a story. And uh, I think you'll especially love the story this year. And uh, so we're going to have Mrs. Mopes to come. And I want you to listen very carefully. You will really enjoy this story. Casey and his mom still lived in their big white house at the edge of town. They were determined to live in the house their dad had bought by the railroad track. Casey could remember his dad telling him all about the big powerful engines. He could almost feel the power under him sometimes. No, this was home, theirs and dad's, and there was no moving, even though they lived about two miles from school, away from people and traffic, and away from everything but the railroad. The railroad, yes, that endless track seemed like a wonderful place to play. A fellow could see how far he could walk on the rail without falling off. 
He could race. He could jump ties. But there was no use thinking about it. Mom had made the track no man's land. Railroads were not places to play. Railroad tracks were made for trains with shining wheels that fit the rails, not for boys whose feet could slip and get caught. Mom wouldn't even let Casey walk the track to school. It would have made an awesome shortcut, Casey fig figured, but Mom said a firm no, and Casey knew it was settled. When fall and cold weather came, there was a special attraction at school. A long sidewalk had been poured, and it was a delight for roller skating. Kids brought their skates, and the new sidewalk soon became a whizzing highway after school. And everyone loved staying and playing. Casey loved it. He wanted to stay late every afternoon. But Mom set limits so that he could get home and get his chores done. And he had to start home soon after school so darkness wouldn't catch him before he got home. Well, that morning, Mom gave him a hug and a peck and scooted him out the door for school. But her hand lingered on his shoulder as she cautioned him to come straight home after school. The sky looks dark and lowering this morning. There may be a storm coming. Be sure to come straight home. Yes, um, and off he skipped. School went without any hitches. Casey gnawed his pencil and scratched his head through his lessons and finally finished the day. At the dismissal bell, he grabbed his books and headed out the door. Hey, Casey, let's skate a little while. Oh, man, I wish I could, but I've got to head for home. Ah, oh, come on, you always have to go home. Can't you just stay a little while? Well, the wheels began turning in Casey's head. Well, it surely would be fun. You could hurry afterwards. Uh, it looked mighty stormy, though. Come on, don't you want to? Want to? Of course he wanted to. That did it. Casey slammed his books on the steps, strapped on his skates, and soon was skating as fast as the rest of the boys. Man, what fun! But before Casey realized it, the sky had changed to a grim gray and clouds hung lowering overhead. It was already getting dark. Hey, buddy, look! There, there's a storm coming. I, I gotta get home. Not waiting for an answer, Casey jerked off his skates and ran. Oh. What would Mama say? He remembered the last thing she had said that morning. There may be a storm. Come straight home. Even running all the way wouldn't make up for lost time now. Then he came to the clearing. The railroad track. Oh, that would be the perfect shortcut. As he turned to go down the tracks, a little voice inside seemed to warn him, but he ignored it. He had to get home. Mom would never know. So he ran down the center of the tracks. He disobeyed. He pulled his collar high up around his neck as he felt the cold wind coming in strong gusts and heard its wintry moan rise through the trees. Then, something cold and icy started to sting his face. <gasps> Sweet. He ran as he had never run before. Maybe he could get home before the sleep blinded him. Oh, why hadn't I listened to Mom? Why hadn't I obeyed? Why didn't I just go home like she said? Then, it happened. His foot slipped on the wet, slick railroad bed. This was the danger he had always been warned about. But he never dreamt it could happen to him. He turned his ankle and went sprawling to the ground. The pain made him cry out. And quickly, he began to pick himself up. But, oh no, terror struck his heart. He couldn't get up. His ankle. 
He, he was stuck. Every effort he made to free his foot only made it worse. But, but he had to get loose. He'd just twist his foot out and leave his shoe. It would be better to leave a shoe than to be pinned to the track. And then, off in the distance, terror shot through Casey's heart like a bullet. Maybe it was just the wind he heard. But then again, it was no mistake. There was a train coming. The evening westbound with a thousand thundering wheels. Casey pulled and yanked and <coughs> twisted and turned. Nothing freed his foot. Oh, why? Why had he come this way? Help! Help! He screamed. No answer came, but the winds howled. Casey was so cold now, he could hardly move. Oh, he didn't want to die, and oh, if Mama would only come. But no, she wouldn't be out in this storm. And anyway, why would she look for him after he had been so disobedient? Help! Oh, help! Somebody please help, he screamed. But his call was drowned out by the approaching westbound. The whistle that first came soft and eerie through the sleeping wind now came loud and shrill. And tears that first came hot to Casey's face now were stopped. And he just lay there nearly frozen by cold and fear. All hope was gone. And then, through the night, came a voice. Casey! Casey! Oh! He knew that voice. Had she really come in all this storm? Casey mustered all his strength to answer, Mama, Mama, here I am. And the next thing Casey knew, his loving mother knelt beside him, freed his ankle, and lifted him over the rail and down the embankment just in time. The giant engine thundered. Home again, warm and cozy. Casey seemed to understand as never before what his mom meant when she talked about the Lord Jesus Christ who died for his sins. Sin was very real to Casey now. It wasn't hard to see how disobedience and wanting his own way was wrong. And he understood better the verse in Isaiah he had memorized long before. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. That was exactly what he had done. He chose to go his own way. But as he looked at his mother through the kitchen door and saw her face and hands still red and raw from the blustering storm, he also realized what the last part of the verse meant. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. Casey's mother had done nothing wrong, but she had to suffer the wind and the sleet and the cold to save him. Jesus was sinless. He had done no sin, but he received the punishment of God for Casey's sin, just as if he had been rebellious and disobedient himself. Well, just as Mama had risked her very life to rescue Casey, Jesus had suffered death on the cruel cross of Calvary to pay for Casey's sin. Casey got it settled. He confessed his sin to God, and he put his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And life took on a new meaning to Casey that night. Amen. Thank you so much. I hope you've put your trust in Christ as your Savior as well. You know what? I trusted Christ when I was 15 years old, 37 years ago. Someone told me the good news, what Jesus Christ did for me and how he gave his life for me on the cross of Calvary and paid my sin debt. And I called on the name of the Lord. I trusted Christ as my Savior. And that's the best thing that I ever did. And I hope you've done that too. 
And another one of our favorite songs talks about that. And it's called, If You're Saved and You Know It. And so there's three little parts to this song. If you're saved and you know it, say amen. And then we'll shout, amen. And then if you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. Okay? And then it says, if you're saved and you know it, stomp your feet. Okay? And then we'll do all three. And we'll try not to get confused. All right? So let's, uh, how about, let's see, do we need to stand up? No, I don't, I don't get, yeah, I guess we need to stand up. Yeah, let's, let's uh, stand up, stretch our legs, and sing right out on this. All right, here we go. If you're saved and you know it, say amen. Amen. If you're saved and you know it, say amen. Amen. If you're saved and you know it, then your life will surely show it. You can be seated. Very good. In just a few moments, we're going to pray and dismiss, and we're going to head outside, and we'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment. But before we do, I want to just follow up just a moment of what the story was talking about uh, there that uh, Mrs. Moats read. And I want to ask you, uh, the most important question that you'll ever be asked. And this is the question right up here. How can I become God's child? And I hope you know the answer to that question. But I want to tell you where you can find the answer. It's in God's Word. God's Word has the answer to that question. How can I become God's child? How can I know my sins are forgiven? How can I know that I have a home in heaven? How can I know that I have eternal life? Well, God's Word, the Bible, tells us. And the first thing it tells us is that we need to admit that we're sinners. We need to realize that we have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's what Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 says. That just means we've all done wrong things. And uh, if I said, raise your hand if you've done something wrong, we would all raise our hand. You know why? We have all done wrong things. Now, what's wrong with doing wrong things? Well, our sin separates us from God because God is holy and cannot be in the presence of sin. He cannot have fellowship with sin. Okay? He can't have relationship with sin. And the problem is we're sinners. And the, the scripture says, all have sinned. You know what that means? I've sinned, you've sinned, we've all sinned. And that sin separates us from God who is holy. And that's what Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 talks about. The wages of sin is death. And the word death there means separation. Separation from God. Isaiah says, but your iniquities, that's just another word for sin, your sin have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid His face from you that He will not hear. What does that mean? Well, it means that we're all sinners and that our sin separates us from God who is holy. Well, here's, the, here's another thing that the Bible tells us. We can't save ourselves. Okay, we understand we've all sinned. We understand that our sin separates us from God. Well, here's something else the Bible tells us. We can't get to heaven by trying to be good. A lot of people think that. Well, if I, 
if I'm, if I'm a good person, then, then the Lord will let me into heaven. Well, the Bible tells us we can't get to heaven by doing good things. In fact, the Bible says this, for by grace, that means, grace means it's, it's a gift from God. By grace are ye saved, delivered from your sin through faith, when you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and what He did for you on the cross of Calvary. And that not of yourselves. You can't save yourself. It is the gift of God. It's a gift He offers you, not of, what is that word? Works. Not of works, lest any man should vote. So there's no works that I can do to save myself. There's no works that I can do to, to bring myself into fellowship with God. There's no works that I can do to take care of that sin that separates me from God. Well, the good news is God loved us so much, He made a way for us to be saved. He made a way for our sins to be forgiven. You know what He did? He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, and Christ paid the price for our sin so that our sin could be paid for and taken out of the way and we could have fellowship with God. We could be brought into sweet fellowship with the Lord. God commendeth, that means He demonstrated, He showed, He proved His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, do you see what that verse says? Christ died for us. He took our place and He paid the price for our sin. So first of all, admit that you're a sinner. And I think we'd all say, you know what? I, I sure would. Yeah, I'm a sinner. I have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, number two, believe who Jesus Christ is and what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you. Understand that he came to this earth as God's only son and he lived a perfect life. And then he went to the cross and he paid for your sin on that cross. He became the perfect sacrifice for your sin. 1 John 2 says this, Jesus Christ, the righteous, he's righteous. He doesn't have any sin. And he is the propitiation. That's just a big word that means he's the full payment for your sin. He fully paid for your sin and fully satisfied the sin debt. He's the propitiation for our sins, my sin, your sin, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. That's why he went to the cross. He died on that cross, and he took the punishment for your sin. He paid the price for your sin. Jesus Christ, his own self, bare our sins in his own body on the tree. What tree? The cross. That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we're healed. We're healed when we put our faith in what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary. What does the scripture say? He died on the cross. He was buried. And what else? He rose again the third day. Isn't that what the Bible says? Well, it says Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Remember, the Bible has the answer. The Bible tells us how we can be saved. Speaking of Christ, it says, Who was delivered for our offenses, our sins, and was raised again for our justification. That means so that as guilty sinners, we could be declared not guilty by what Jesus did for us on the cross. So here's the last thing. We choose to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. Have you ever done that? Have you made a choice to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Did you believe that God loved you so much He sent Christ to this earth? That Christ died on that cross for you? He died on that cross for your sin? So what do we do? We put our trust in Jesus as our Savior and we ask God to save us based on what Jesus Christ did for us on that cross. That's what we do. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That means delivered from your sin. Whosoever, you can put your name there. I put my name there 37 years ago. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And when you do that, you know what God does? He gives you eternal life. He gives you everlasting, eternal life in heaven with Him. That's the promise. 
Remember the first part of that verse, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ said this, verily, verily, that means truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. And here's one of my favorite verses right here. In this was manifested or revealed, made known, the love of God toward us, toward you, toward me, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, this world, why did He do it? That we might live through Him. That's how you live. That's how you have everlasting life. It is through the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one way. He is the only way of salvation. Have you made a choice to trust Him as your personal Savior? It'll be the greatest choice you ever make. It'll be the greatest day of your life. Let's pray together. Father, we are so thankful for this special day of Vacation Bible School. We're so thankful for all the fun we can have together, all the blessings of the day. But Lord, I pray that if there's anyone here who's never put their faith and trust in your Son, Jesus Christ, and what Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary when He died there for our sin, was buried and rose again, that we could have life. You want, if you say, you know what, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm saved, but I want to be sure. You come talk to me. I'll talk to you more from God's Word about how you can know your sins are forgiven and that you have eternal life and an eternal home in heaven. We'd love to talk to you more about that. All right. Do we have some instructions, Mrs. Motes? I guess we can go out the front doors and walk around, maybe not through the middle of the parking lot. Okay. okay. And when we get down out to the back, there's all different tents. There's different activities at each one. There's no rush. You can do things more than once. And then we have food. We have uh, hot dogs and snow cones and popcorn and all kinds of things. As you go from tent to tent or do different things, you'll get some tickets. And then you can wait until you gather up tickets, and then you can go to the prize booth and turn them in and get some prizes. Okay. okay. All right. So lots of fun things to do. So how about we just uh, go ahead and we'll make a line and we'll start heading out. How about we stay in the grass instead of in the parking lot. So there's plenty of room in the grass and we can walk around. All right. Let's just line up and we'll head out.